right, the second part of this would be now that we've located the zeros, uh, we're now going to locate the vertical asymptotes, the vertical asymptotes of this particular function. Um, and in order to do that, what we want to do is set the denominator, set the denominator equal to zero, and then solve for x. So if you look at our function here, our denominator is x squared minus 36. So we're going to set that equal to zero, and then we'll factor this. This is a difference of two squares. Difference of two squares. And following the factor pattern for a difference of two squares, what we would do is this would the square root of x squared is x, the square root of 36 is 6, so we would factor this as x minus 6 times x plus 6. So again, keeping in mind that these two, these two factors, x minus 6 and x plus 6, equals 0, we know then that x minus 6 equals 0 and x plus 6 equals 0. So we're going to solve both equations and here we see that x equals 6 and x equals minus 6. So what's the effect of this? Well, what we're going to do on our graph in just a minute is we are going to then, we are going to draw, so you will draw two vertical lines passing through the x-axis at 6 and negative 6. These are the vertical asymptotes. So let's review for just one second what a vertical asymptote is. So again, given an x-y coordinate plane graph, x and y. So here, I would have a vertical line at 6, 2, 4, 6, vertical line at 6, and negative 2, negative 4, negative 6, and I would have a vertical line going there. So however I draw my graph, if I have a graph that is coming from negative um, infinity towards zero, and let's say this, it might come up against, it might wind up going like this, this, this asymptote is basically acting like a fence. In other words, it, this particular graph would never hit the actual vertical line. And maybe coming from positive infinity, the same thing might happen. It could be if I'm drawing a graph and maybe between the values of negative 6 and 6, maybe I have part of my function goes like this. And again, none of these graphs would wind up hitting these two vertical lines. So these lines act like fence, like fence lines. Where Think of the cattle and electric fences where they get really infinitely close, but you don't want to touch the electric fence. Okay, And that's basically what an asymptote is. All right. So, keeping all that in mind, um, now we need to look for the horizontal asymptote. All right? And it states here, and I'll try and decipher this for you. So if we have this rational function, f of x, where you have p of x and q of x are two other polynomial functions, okay? um, the graph of f of x has at most one horizontal. Now, a horizontal asymptote is a line going through the y-axis. So we'd have a dotted line going horizontally. Horizontal asymptote. If the degree of p is greater than the degree of q, so like if this is an x cubed and this is an x squared, then there is no horizontal asymptote. If the degree of p is less than the degree of q, then the horizontal line is the line y equals 0. So in other words, it's going to be the x-axis. But if the degree of p is equal to the degree of q, the horizontal asymptote then is going to be a horizontal line crossing the y-axis as a ratio of the leading coefficients of p and q. So let's look at our particular example. Here, our degree in 3x squared minus 27 is 2. Okay? So, and our degree in 1x squared minus 36 is also 2. So we would go to the third scenario. The degree of p is equal to the degree of q. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be some y equals, and it's going to be a ratio of the leading coefficients, that is the numbers that are multiplying the x squared. So in this case, our number on top is 3, our number on bottom is 1, so we would have a line, a horizontal line crossing the y-axis at 3. Okay, 
It can be observed that the degree of numerator is 2, so is the degree of the denominator. If the two degrees are equal, then there is a horizontal asymptote line acting as a fence, which can be written as an equation, y equals 3 over 1, which is equal to 3. Okay? So graphing the actual function, here's what it looks like. So 3x squared, again, 3x squared minus 27 over x squared minus 36. So and you can see here, here's our y equals 3, so there's our horizontal asymptote, it's lying in green. Our vertical asymptotes are at 6 and negative 6, that's the blue and the purple line. And then it is, our zeros are at 3 and negative 3. So this is the actual graph of this particular function. And those are the kind of the critical points or critical junctures of the graph. You'll notice that the graph goes from negative infinity towards, um, towards x equals 6. And it goes, it gets infinitely close but never touches that line. Here it's coming from positive infinity to positive 6. And again, it goes really close. And between negative 6 and 6, it actually comes very close again and it's like this is almost like a parabola that is reflected across the x-axis. So that's vertical, positive, vertical and horizontal asymptotes and the zeros.